Last weekend, the Citizens' Assembly gave an indication that it is veering towards recommending change to the Eighth Amendment. But if such a referendum were to take place, and if it were to pass, what would replace it? Joining us are Kate O'Connell, Fine Gael TD for Dublin Bay South, Mary Butler, Fianna Fáil TD for Waterford, Louise O'Reilly, Sinn Féin TD for Fingal, and Ruth Coppinger, Anti-Austerity Alliance TD for Dublin West. If you'd like to comment on the programme, you can text us at 53131, place the word tonight before your comment, or send us a tweet at hash vinb, or email us at tonight at td3.ie. Kate O'Connell, what is the Citizens' Assembly achieving that parliamentary debate, as would happen in most other states, could not have done in relation to this Eighth Amendment? Well, I suppose it's teasing out some of the issues that would be very difficult to tease out, because it's a political hot potato. Um, it received submissions and a huge quantity of people engaged with them. So I believe in doing the work that perhaps was impossible to conduct within the zone. Um, so to, to, to then come to recommendations, to clear through, I suppose, a lot of people's views, and then for the documentation to come with recommendations to the zone, but then we can sort of get on with the process. So I believe the whole process has Sped, uh, has, has sped things up. I know. sped things up rather than slowing it down? Yes, I do. And I believe that period of time is very, very important the amount of submissions they've received, that people have engaged with it to such an extent. I think it would have been a major concern if nobody sent in a submission. Then I think it would have failed in the sense that very few people had sent in a submission. But the fact that there's 13,000, as far as I know, mm. plus have sent them in. So I, do, I mean, I'm not sure what sort of breakdown that is and, and, and how and were people, you know, pushing it or whatever. But definitely 13,000 people's submissions should give a, a good reflection um, of the feelings out there. But also the teasing out of um, medical issues that only medical experts and scientists can actually answer. I mean, how would we deal with that in the dull circumstance? I think it's sort of dealing with something that was politically very difficult. Um, I think initially I was quite sceptical of it, and I had I've said before, but I'm quite happy with it now, the way it's progressing. Um, and I was concerned initially that it might be a dragged out process, but that didn't happen. And um, I know they've asked for additional time, and I mean, perhaps an additional, additional weekend. Meeting, don't think and, additional yeah, time, yeah, yeah, additional yeah. meeting. But isn't, isn't that a good thing if, yeah. if, if okay. it straightens it out? So I think it's all positive so far, okay. anyway. Ruth Carpenter, do you think we needed a Citizens' Assembly? No, I, I certainly don't think we did, and uh, I don't, don't think we do either. J just to say, we've had loads of polls on the issue of abortion, and the Amnesty poll, for example, last February, showed that 80% wanted a referendum. 59% said, without any you know, precondition of any kind, 12% said, uh, maybe with some reasonable conditions, and actually only 12% said no. And it's a bigger sample. No, I, I think 59% said that they believed the ban was cruel and inhumane, mm. is, is how that mm. amnesty... Well, I, I checked it again tonight, right. Mick, yeah. But um, there's been subsequent polls done, all of them have shown a majority. One to an actual or less or one referendum, of what they want yeah. the uh, My point is, it's a bigger sample than 99 people sitting in the Citizens' Assembly, right. and, and this was uh, a way for particularly Andy Kenny and the current government to uh, outsource it away from the doll. The, the key issue here is we, we, there is actually a consensus around a referendum and it isn't actually the big divisive issue when you look at those figures but the problem is for the political parties in particular Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael who are very out of step behind where public opinion is on this and other social questions I think and uh, have been clinging on for nigh on a century to the Catholic Church and therefore will find it very difficult to break with the church on this issue. And there will be issues with the church in terms Surely of the Surely the bigger education. problem is not that. The bigger problem is that what is to follow it. In, in, in a lot of referendums of this type, it was a very straightforward issue. For example, the same-sex marriage, are you for or against it? In this question, in this issue, it's a question of what do you replace, what is there, what do you replace it with? Yeah. And that is, that, well, that is the biggest question of all. The, the, well, the first step... And what most people agree on is that we have to get rid of the Eighth Amendment. Right. It has to be removed from our Constitution. The reason being, it's affecting women's lives, not just on the issue of abortion, by the way, but also, you know, a clinically dead pregnant woman whose family ran through the torture Christmas before last. It's important people know there's mission creep into women's health and maternity services. So for all of those reasons, it must be okay. deleted. Then, 
of course there has to be legislation because there has to be the provision of abortion in Irish hospitals and also, you know, the, the provision of the uh, abortion pill or whatever. So there will have to be legislation. But I think the absolute uh, essential thing is that nothing's put in the Constitution because it simply isn't the place to be dealing with this issue. It's not the norm to deal with this yeah. issue. And I don't think Irish people probably realise that, that there's only, I think, two other countries that do that. OK. Louise, uh, Sinn Féin has reached a conclusion on what it wants to replace the current system with. We have, and uh, I just want to pick up on one point that, that Kate made um, about the, the medical experts that the, the Citizens' Assembly uh, will hear from. I believe the Citizens' Assembly is, is doing its job very well because its job is to delay uh, or ever having an opportunity to discuss this properly. Um, I think it's the biggest can-kicking exercise um, and the can is being kicked down the road and I don't think that's fair and I don't think that's fair to women. But how would we deal with that in the doll with medical experts and everything else? We bring them into committee as in the same in the as, protection but in the same as we do with any when okay. we require additional information, we call the people in who have that information and we hear from them. The doll is very well equipped to deal with that. And I think we saw the the capability of the doll to have a respectful debate when we debated the uh, the legislation on fatal fetal abnormalities, and there was almost unanimous agreement that we should repeal the Eighth Amendment. I mean, that, that was what struck me. But people were very respectful of each other. We were very respectful of the subject. We were respectful of the fact that there were people in the gallery and people outside watching us. And I think that, you know, it, it's it's to do people in the doll a disservice yeah, to say we couldn't debate it. Again, we go back to the big issue is to replace with what? And Sinn Féin uh, has come to a conclusion, you, your specific provisions. We do you want those in legislation? prior to uh, referendum being called? No, we believe that the referendum needs to come first. Right. And when the Eighth Amendment has been repealed, and, yeah. and we believe it, it should and yeah. it must be done quickly, we believe that the doll then has a role. And we will be putting forward uh, legislation that facilitates abortion in the case of rape, incest, fatal fetal abnormalities, and where there is um, a risk, a grave risk to, to the, the, the life and the health, including mental health of the mother. Which is in the last part has been already. In it's the already there. Yes, yeah. no, but yeah. I think it, it's so important as, to, as to, as to, as yeah, to say that. But as far as you're concerned, it, it, it's the life limiting of fatal fetal abnormalities, rape, and incest. Those are the provisions under which. Yes. abortion should be and allowed. We, and that is the position right. that we will put forward. We have already, we have had that debate. We have had yeah. that debate within our party. It wasn't an easy debate to have, you know, and, and uh, as far as I know, I don't believe that that debate has been had fully out of Fianna Fáil Ardash, and I'm not sure about the Fianna Gael Ardash, but we had it in our party. It was not and, easy. And therefore, uh, were that to arise, it wouldn't be a free vote as far as you're concerned within the party? Oh, absolutely not. No, right. the, the whip will be applied, and, okay. and, and uh, as, it is, uh, as it is to all votes, the whip would be applied. And, uh, but, you know, you have to respect the fact that this is the view, the considered view of our members. And they, we did not come easily yeah. to, uh, to that position, but we did come to that position following a very robust debate. Can I just ask Louise to clarify on Sinn Féin's position, as you just put it there, because uh, on the, you're, you're calling for legislation for abortion on the grounds of rape, which I think is actually quite... A controversial and, 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 and I can give you my reasons why I think that, uh, but also fatal fetal abnormality. But you mentioned there where there's a grave danger to a woman's mental health. Your motion that you had on the day we had our repeal debate didn't include physical health. And I'm a little bit worried about that because that, I think that, that's, that's already in the that's that's already in, that's that's already in the No, sorry, of life. sorry, no, that it isn't. Not a woman's, a woman's health is not dealt with. It's a woman's life that's dealt with. That was the whole point about Savita. And one of the kids, it's not at all dealt with in the protection of life during pregnancy. Okay, well, and I just think the health issue is completely sidelined. You're talking about physical health and, yes, and, 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 mental, and health. mental health. Well, mental health. If physical and mental health, health is in danger, then that is a permissive circumstance as far as your proposed legislation yes. would be. Okay, uh, Mary Butler, does Fianna Fáil have a position? Uh, Fianna Fáil um, has a vote of conscience on this. It's a we, free vote. It's a free vote. We were the first party actually to implement this, I think it was in 2013, prior to when I became a TD myself. So it's a vote of conscience and basically we have people within the party that are pro-life, we have people that are pro-choice and it's, it's a vote of conscience, it's a very, very emotive issue, there's no doubt about it. And I think, it's very respect, I think it's very important that we respect everyone's hmm. opinion and, and, and um, you know, we need to have a respectful debate on this and you spoke earlier about the Citizens' Assembly. 
And I actually feel that it's very important that we have a, we have 100 people, cross-section of 100 people, that are prepared to give up a weekend every month, that they will come to Dublin and they will debate the issues. And I think it's very, very important that we have an informed debate. OK, but in the event that a referendum were to pass, has Fianna Fáil come to any position as to what it would propose then for a new, uh, under, what, under what conditions abortion would be permissible if no, a referendum were No, to we haven't come to a position on that because, as I said, it's an open vote. What we were worried about in Fianna Fáil is, you know, it's, 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 it's not as simple as a slogan, the clean the eight. What would be there in, in place of it? Well, that's what I'm getting at. Yes. Yeah. So, but, but what I'm saying is, Fianna Fáil, is Fianna Fáil going to come to a position on that? Or... The, the, the one thing I will say is, in, re, in relation to Fianna Fáil and in relation to this, it's an open vote, there will be no whip applied. So it will be up to each individual member, if there is a, a vote on this, to decide themselves. So in, in, in the event that presumably something is going to replace, it, sorry, if the, uh, a referendum were held, and if, as I think a lot of people are suggesting now, that in, in the broadest terms it were to pass, Fianna Fáil does not have a position on what exactly would replace it. No, there's an open vote. What we want to know what would replace it, because you know the repeal movement is constantly saying repeal the eight. But you're not going it's to not propose a specific, you're not going to propose specific conditions. No, no. And what I would like to go back to is, um, you know, in relation to uh, the fatal fetal abnormalities. Like, what determines a fatal fetal abnormality? That's what I would like to know, because well, you know, you know we, we're going to deal, we'll, we will deal with that in. in Second half of fairness, okay. we will yeah. Just very briefly, Kate, Fine Gael position? Fine Gael's position um, hasn't been decided yet, apart from will the fact that it has been said in the past that there will be a free vote on these issues. What I would just like to say, and Louise is totally aware that I know that we can bring people in um, at committee stage, and it is proposed that post assembly there's a, select, a committee formed. And there more than likely will be experts brought in. So no reason I've done that. the job that they I, I don't. I think it would have taken too long. I, oh, I, I firmly believe that that period was needed. I also do think that we cannot assume, even though we, we, we might argue on the 87% of the 80% yeah. or whatever, I do think it is foolish to assume it would pass. I'm not assuming Irish, it at no, all. No, no, but I, sorry, I, I, I don't mean that to you personally. I mean that it would be foolish with any with any poll results, these days in light of Brexit or Trump or the way people go on. And I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, and I, and I don't mean to speak for people on the panel, but some of us have the same aim at the end of this, despite our political differences. And I have always spoken out clearly on this. And no matter what anyone says. We have 4,000 of our women travelling every yeah. year out of this country. And we can either ignore that or we can deal with it as the way we treat people, the citizens of our country. I'm not just saying the women, the families, the brothers, the daddy, the man. If you're talking whatever. about dealing with that, Kate, you're, you're, you're talking about bringing in, a situ uh, bringing in a scenario that would be relatively similar, for instance, to what... Ruth, Ruth is, is, is suggesting. I would be much more in line with what Ruth is saying okay. on this than that's, I would be with the, with the Sinn Féin position. Right. But that's me personally. Oh, that's fine. Okay, that's we were going to come back to it. Just, I have to, oh. I'm sorry, Katia, because we have to take a very quick break. We'll be back to it straight after that. Welcome back. Um, Mary Butler, you mentioned fatal fetal abnormality before the break, and you have a personal situation that I think would be fair to say informs your beliefs in this whole area. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I, I would agree with you there. Um, I did mention fatal fetal abnormalities because I suppose maybe up to five or six years ago we weren't used to that term. And I have, I have, I have a, a little cousin myself, she's 15. She has CDLS syndrome, which is um, Amsterdam dwarfism. Uh, she, as I said, she's 15 years of each age. She has never spoken. She has never walked. She's a joy to behold. She's tube fed every day. She has the love of her mother, her father, and her brother, and her extended family. And why should she, why should she be denied the right to live? And that's why I feel very, very strongly about this. I also feel the right to life of the unborn needs to be recognised within the Constitution as it is at the moment. And I feel like, why should her life be worth any less than my children, or anyone else here on the panel's children? And I think, you know, um, I was very, very concerned after the weekend listening to the, the whole debate about, around Down syndrome and the fact that there, since this new screening has been introduced that um, in Iceland, for example, no child with Down syndrome has been born within the last four years. And in Denmark, for example, there's only been a handful of children yeah, born with Down syndrome. Yeah, but if such syndrome. a scenario were to apply yeah. here, it yes. would have to have 
been done so by legislation irrespective of whether or not uh, no, well, uh, well, well, my fear is that if, 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 if abortion was introduced into this country and we would have abortion on demand, mm -hmm. like where does it end? Like, I, I, where I, I, is society going with it? Is your position, Mary, that if there was a referendum, this, it, it would be the beginning of the so-called, as it's described in some place, the slippery slope? I do. Right. So I that, do. So that would, that would be I right. do feel it. Now, I, I'm, I'm, fully, um, I, I'm fully of the belief that people are entitled to have a say on this. Yeah. And, and I, I certainly so you're in favour of a referendum, I'm even though you would be I'm in favour so of a pro referendum. Life. I have no problem right. with people having their say. I think it's very, very important that people have their say. We live in a democracy, after yeah. all. I personally would take a pro-life stance on this. Um, you know, as I've, 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 I've explained there, I would have always had um, a pro-life ethos myself. I'm a mum of three myself. But what I would like to say is that you know, it's it's just not a black and white issue. It's very very emotive. It's it's oh, very, yeah, you know, and 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 that. like I I I can sympathise with any mother who sees herself mm. in the situation Absolutely. that she may be told, um, you know. But like my problem is, what constitutes a fatal fetal abnormality? Well, and you know, you, that's, you, that's you, the you problem I have. Story as well, Kate, and, and it was yeah, quite and just before I said that, I mean, just to clarify, just before the break, I mean, what I was in, in agreement with with Ruth is that I don't believe this is any place in the constitution, yeah. and I do believe it needs to be removed from the constitution. And just to clarify, perhaps for people out there, that it, when it is removed, that the protection of life during pregnancy legislation is still there. So it's not that there's going to be sort of a, a yeah. run on clinics. Yeah. But um, to get back to, to your point, but I mean, fecal fetal abnormality is actually not a defined medical term. It's yeah. one of the first issues. Life and also, I, suppose, I don't think I probably need to get into the definition yeah, yeah. of fecal. Um, but um, I suppose the, the test at, at, at eight weeks that's now available, which is a non-invasive maternal mm. blood test, and I had it done on my, my last child, um, and I, I did it just for peace of mind. Um, and I have a, a pro-life ethos as well, in the sense that I have, have three young children, and I hope to perhaps have some more in the future. But um, and this idea of abortion on demand, as though you kind of go to a vending machine, you get a token, yeah. and you go in. You know, I mean, I take serious offence that there's absolutely the no phrase woman. on demand. That, I think yeah, is quite offensive. Yeah, I think that. it's very offensive because I don't think, and maybe somebody on the panel can give me an example. I don't think any woman ever wants an abortion ever sees that in front of her and and ever wants it ever ever wants that to be the the, res, the resolution to some pregnancy and when it comes to down syndrome i mean i myself my sister-in-law and who's next to my husband in age is a year younger than me and she's down syndrome and she stays with us um some of the time and we help her, help her out and all that and she brings us more joy than some lads with nothing wrong with them mm. so i mean i mean from yeah, that point well, of view you know yeah, i mean people you, have introduced that you know, this idea that question. you know that, oh, that, that this is about the figures kate in, in, in i and in denmark and no, in no, england no, no, what I, well, fundamentally, I, what I fundamentally believe in is the woman's right to choose. Yeah, and that's, I fundamentally that's exactly. believe in bodily autonomy position, and yeah. I fundamentally believe that we should trust women with their own health. And from when it comes to my own personal story, my child did not obviously have a fatal fetal abnormality because he's alive. Yeah. He had a profound birth defect. But the point is, is that when you're awaiting test results in Ireland, you literally are going, if the test is this way, yeah. I'm staying, and this other way, I'm traveling. And it's a lonely place to be. It was fine, not fine for me, but it was probably easier for me in the sense I was in a marriage and I had a partner and the price of traveling. But I really think we should be thinking about people who are on their own, perhaps having the price of traveling or the capacity to travel. It's the human situation, they should be enough. Citizens okay. of this that's country. Fair enough, that's fair enough. Ruth, just let me, just sorry, just to go back to the politics of this thing, let me put this scenario to you. You're coming from a particular position, your party, and for example, Louise party is coming from another position. And one would imagine the two main parties would be coming from particular positions that they may differ internally or whatever. However, if in the broadest terms all are in favour of a referendum and are coming from different positions, do you not think that it's likely that that could damage the prospect of any referendum being passed unless there's some broad consensus? Because a lot of people may look at it and decide that because there's no certainty, therefore they will not vote for something that instinctively they might be in favour of. Okay. Um, if people are in favour of a referendum, for, for different reasons, hmm. Which I think they actually are. I mean, I, I, and by the way, I'm out talking to people on this issue on the streets every week. It's not like I'm sitting in a little bubble only talking is. to Everybody's like minded people. people yeah. yeah, well, we're out on the streets campaigning. We've actually seen for ourselves 
the huge shift in public opinion there's been. I think not, you can see that very in surprised, you can see that, particularly yeah. since the tragic death of Savita. It has to be said, it was yeah, a turning point. That. So uh, I think that there is a consensus for a referendum, and I think we should we should have one just to repeal the eighth. But in terms of the issues that have been raised as to what should replace it with, we, we have about 10 women leaving the country for abortions every day. And by the way, they're, they're your cousins, sisters, neighbours. They're not aliens from outer space. They're ordinary women for a whole variety of different reasons. Very few of those reasons, by the way, are because of disability yeah. or fetal fetal abnormality. And I think it's been thrown up as some kind of an emotive thing, like eugenics type, type of thing, when it's not really an issue. But can I just say, it's very hard to sit here and listen to somebody from Fianna Fáil kind of taking a high moral, moral ground on this. Because everybody takes a high moral but, ground. But hang on, I, no, I, no, I, I, can I, 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 need to, I, I, I really need to finish okay, the point, because to bring up a child with a disability or a serious medical condition in this country is no joke. And I have, it's a woman's choice and, and their partner, whether they wish to do that or not, and nobody else's. But just on what you'd replace it with. I think a woman should be able to go to her own GP or a doctor. I know you think that the point I'm making to you is, in terms of, let, let's face it, any referendum is a political campaign. Unless there is something there that people and middle people who appeared in the opinion polls to be in that middle of, they want change, but they're not sure for, for what exactly. And a lot of them do not, for example, go as far as perhaps your party might. For them, if they're looking at a referendum, if there is not certainty as to what exactly should we replace it, for example, in the Daltrew legislation, is there a possibility that it may fail accordingly? Because past referendums have suggested there's very much a possibility you see, of that. I, I think the legislation that will come after would actually be very determined by the nature of the campaign, the debate. So you're saying have the referendum without specific legislation I, being, being ready I to am, go? Yeah. Yeah. I am, yeah. I think that this okay. has been injected into the thing when okay. it doesn't need to be, because I actually think the nature of the, the debate, the scale of the, the result, etc., will have a huge bearing so you, on what you, you don't think that there, you don't think that such a scenario would bring uncertainty to a referendum in terms of what people want to vote for? I do. I do. This is going to bring uncertainty. People repeatedly saying this is going to bring uncertainty. We're standing on the edge of a cliff. That possibly will inject uncertainty I'm where, asking, where it is. I mean, it's, no, it's no, a legitimate I, question to ask. I also, I, I speak to a lot of people on this. We, we, we knock doors, we talk to people. And the overwhelming view is that the Eighth Amendment has no place in our Constitution. Yes. Take it. It would seem uh, to be, no, to be fair to other people. No, it would seem I, the majority view it. It would seem. That is, as we sit here yeah. right now, that is without knowing. I mean, Mary's made it very clear. Fianna Fáil don't have a position on this. Are they going to come to one? Sure, who knows? You know, they may all come to individual Well, to be fair, no, Louise, again, so uh, feel, be being told that you have to follow a particular position an issue like this, some would say that that has been the problem down through the years, to having party whips, but go on, yeah. Look, well, but they the, have them on other issues that exactly, actually yeah, attack yeah, women, yeah, attack yeah, the issue of whether or not we should repeal the Eighth Amendment, I believe, is a settled matter in the minds of most people. As we sit here now, not knowing what might replace it, people are satisfied that the Eighth Amendment should be repealed, it should be taken out of our Constitution. It is our job as legislators to then decide what comes in next. Fine, but I put something else to you, so you say that, that's, that, that's fair enough. Look at previous referendum where the, the outcome was very much an A or a B. Look at the likes of, for example, the same-sex marriage. That would have looked like a foregone conclusion. It was a brilliantly run campaign. All the opinion polls prior to it said that up to three quarters or more people mm. were, were in favour. Yet, it ended up 62% only voted in favour. Look at the divorce referendum, albeit 20 years ago, but at the same time it wasn't Neanderthal times. 50 point something percent voted in favour, yet prior to that, all the opinion polls is 70-80%. Look at the children's referendum. 42% of people not, voted I'm against it. I'm not suggesting it. that we don't have to have a campaign. What I'm saying is, as it stands, my belief is that there is an overwhelming majority of people who are in favour of repealing Irrespective the Irrespective of whether they have certainty for what they're voting for. But, uh, this is what they're telling me now, and they don't have that certainty. Okay, They, they have it from, from Sinn Féin because we have made yeah. our position clear, but we have also said we will enter into a debate in the Dáil, which is the proper place, not the Citizens' Assembly. The, the, the danger of deciding legislation in be, advance to be discussed. Sorry, I'm just the danger of deciding legislation in advance of a referendum is you're actually narrowing and prejudging yeah. what people want, rather than when we're out in the doors having a referendum, having a discussion, 
out on stalls. You know what I mean? I know what you're saying. I know, that, that, that's the Gauging argument. Gauging then what people want, in my opinion, it would be passed. But can I just say about, uh, about legislation? I think if you have a discussion with people, actually, and you, you, you make it clear, it doesn't matter whether abortion is legal or illegal. If the Eighth Amendment is removed or not removed, the abortion rate will continue. And it's simply a question of whether we want that to be legal and safe oh, yeah, and yeah. recognise that it's going yeah, to happen. Look, that's, so, like Mary or, or whoever may be against abortion, but that wouldn't preclude you from allowing it to happen because it is happening and no, it will that, happen. Look, the no, I understand it's happening, yeah. but at and the same time, I, as a, I am as entitled to my opinion, Ruth, as you are to yours. Now, Mick, you asked the question in relation to, do we think that um, by having a referendum, by not having a clear choice at the end of it, would it affect people's votes? And I certainly think it would. I but certainly think it would. I'm very concerned about the idea that, you know, somebody who would be... But do you understand raped, your position really? Somebody that was raped, was, is, would be raped or subject to incest, which are both against the law, would somehow be adjudicated by mm. somebody to see, was their situation miserable enough that they would be deemed allowed to terminate the pregnancy? I mean, that to me flies in the but face of bodily autonomy and that's my own personal view yeah, and you just picture the scene you're a female that is subject to incest in the home and perhaps you don't have a job where do you go do you go down the road to the doctor and say and usually by the time a rape is is, is reported a lot of the evidence is gone who's going to tick those boxes and say sorry love you haven't enough boxes okay. ticked it's on your right. So I'll let you, okay, well, we'll come no back in that one minute because we have to take a very quick break. Welcome back. A couple of your tweets. Uh, Jan tweets in, actually no one wants to be in a crisis pregnancy, but when in one, access to abortion is what people want. And Tommy Roddy tweets, well done to Mary from Fianna Fall. She's a breath of fresh air. Not many people prepared to voice their pro-life views. Um, Ruth Coppinger, you mentioned that something there in the break which I think, and I'd forgotten it myself, and I think a lot of people made that the um, divorce legislation, which came in, what, 95, whenever that was, 22 years ago, is tied in still to the Constitution, and yeah. that there's a possibility, depending on how you go about dealing with this matter, any legislation could be tied into the Constitution. Uh, I think there's a real fear about that, because the problem with that, the current divorce law, for example, if you want to bring that down from four to two, to be a bit more realistic. Four, that's four to two, four years. Four years to, of separation to two, to years two separation. which is a bit more, because it's actually quite unfair on people yeah. to put that and pose that. Um, you actually have to have a popular vote again. Now, that w that's again what would happen if there legislation... There has to be another referendum. Yes, there has to be a referendum. And it's really essential that legislation, it can be discussed. I've no problem with legislation being discussed. But it mustn't be tied into the Constitution because we'd be back having emotive debates. David Quinn actually said, yeah, he, obviously yeah. on the opposite side of me, but actually from the same viewpoint, said uh, we have to, he said, tie legislation into the Constitution because a left government could come to power in the future and change the legislation. Well, now, he, now he's right. Yeah. And what's wrong with that? If, if No, but... People vote for governments and they vote for them on social platforms, social issues and many and a range of things. And if people decide that the time is for a change in a law, you vote for a government that's going to do that. What's wrong oh, with you that? See, you, you, you said a left referendum and Louise beside you, I think, would consider herself on the left as well, but they come from more of Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael position in this matter, I think. I don't know what the Fianna Fáil position is. Yeah, I know, well, that's fair enough. There's a point there, Louise. You didn't keep asking Mary, and at the end of the day, the Fianna Fáil position was quite clear that we have a vote of conscience since 2013, and unlike some of the members in place, unlike some of the members in place, that they have to, you know... And you haven't answered it, and you can't, and that's the thing, we talk about it. We will have just address this element of it, Louise. I mean, Ruth made the point about uh, legislation being tied into the constitution and again is there a possibility that some people if people who might be not sure what exactly they want to replace the current situation with like just to take an example in Shane's position that some people might be comfortable in going along with a referendum of the current scenario 
if there was a, if it was repeated with legislation tied into the constitution. I think it would be a mistake, and right. I think I also think from talking to people because I say the same as Ruth does. I knock doors. I talk to people all the time. I think from talking to people and only from talking to one of my own neighbours, uh, as she said to me, it needs to be taken out. It has no place there in the first place. It shouldn't be. I think people realise now the dangers, and also when when you consider the fact that we have to have a popular vote to change the divorce referendum, that also i think will you know will concentrate people's minds i don't believe that tying the issue of abortion to the constitution is a good idea well, it's, it's i don't think it's a bad one maybe no, no, and, and can yeah. i tell you my parents campaigned against it and i'm very proud that they did but the the issue tying it to the constitution is a bad idea i think people know that okay. i don't think anyone will want to tie it to the constitution I, I just want to pick up on something about this vote of conscience as though the rest of us don't have a conscience mm. i mean when you consider conscience and you consider Savita Halepinabra, you consider... You can consider um, you, conscious some of the economic measures that have been brought yeah, in by the previous yeah, well, well, that's a, Oh, yeah, that's another debate. Yeah, now. yeah. But I mean, if you consider the conscience of a girl who um, hasn't the price of travelling to the UK and perhaps has to uh, procure abortion pills that should only be used up to eight weeks but, or nine weeks, but then takes them at maybe 12 or 13 weeks and puts herself at risk. I mean, that's where my conscience kicks in here. My conscience kicks in when I... And when I think of the 4,000 a year or the 12 a day, you, people traveling and bringing home boxes with um, ashes of, of, their, of their child and um, that they perhaps really wanted. And it's, not my, it's nothing to do with me, what their reasons are. So, I mean, it's, it breaks my heart when I hear stories of people traveling. I've heard um, of a, uh, this a girl who had to stay in a hostel on her own because she didn't have the price of staying in a hotel, could only afford one night travel. We all have heard the stories of people bleeding in taxis and bleeding on planes and parcels arriving. We're talking about conscience. Um, it, it's a very broad um, thing, conscience. Yeah, and I, mean, I, I, mean, I, mean, I have just come back there. huge difficulty with, I suppose, it being assumed that the rest of us don't have a conscience. No, I don't think I, I, no, really. In fairness, Keith, that wasn't the intention at all. And, and, I, and I think it's very disingenuous of you to say that. I've no, been disingenuous. What I would like to say, like we all know plenty of people that have been in this situation. It's just, it's, it's just doesn't happen in Dublin. It happens in Waterford as well. Believe me, I know it. it happens all but all we know that. Yes, you know. But, thing all I, but the thing I would like to say is, and a, a concern that I would really have, and the, the last figures that have made available to me, the current 2014, the rates of abortion in Ireland were 5.2%. They were 21% in England because it's readily available. Oh, yeah, but, 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 are we going to go there? Irrespective of availability, there's a very different culture in England is, in relation but, to a lot but, of these things. But from 5% to 21%? Okay, but tell me one thing, if I don't if I ask you. you. As you say, you would be against uh, changing the constitution. In your experience as a TD, as a public rep, do you think there is still a lot of people out there who would be of a similar view to yourself? Uh, especially in the rural areas, I would, yes. Do you think there'd be a majority? I mean the opinion polls would suggest otherwise. Um, there may not be a majority. It's very hard to know. As we said, we, we look at Trump, we look at Brexit, we see the way the, base, the votes go. But I would definitely like to go back to the point that you said, that if, if people don't know, if I can't see people just voting to... Um, repeal the Eighth Amendment without knowing what would replace it. Okay. And that's the message yeah. I'm getting. If you, want to talk about, if you want to talk about conscience, um, you can talk about what is on the conscience of this government and the previous government. The UN found that Amanda Mellet, that the, the government failed to protect Amanda Mellet from cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment. That's a hell of a lot to have on your conscience. Mm -hmm. And to put that into the Citizens' Assembly and say, do you know what? We can all wait. We can wait. We can wait. And we can wait. That is a hell of a lot and to have on your I, conscience. I don't think that the movement that we saw in 2016 for repeal, which was a, is a growing movement, particularly of young people, that we saw on marches of up to 25, 30,000, should just simply sit and wait for the Citizens' Assembly and the doll to, to trash this out. I think pressure needs to be brought to bear. But you're not going to have a referendum As, without the OK to die, but you're not going to have it without yeah, the OK to government. I know, but I think the type of referendum that we will get will be heavily influenced by the type of pressure that's brought to bear from the movement outside. And for example, on International Women's Day this year in March, I think that the movement should consider a huge demonstration for repeal. But the, huge what, what you're suggesting, I mean, just as an example, what the AAA are suggesting should replace what's there at the moment. That is more, to use that phrase, even liberal than you have in the likes of Spain. Well, when you say liberal, I, well, I I'll think... Just, you, you know yeah. what I'm saying. It's, it's more of, it, it makes abortion more available than some other, than, for example, what 
Louise is suggesting. I, the only point I'm making is what you're talking about, and everybody accepts there's a sea change, is going from a scenario where it's in the constitution in this country, as it, to the best of my knowledge, isn't in any other Western European country or has been, all the way to leaping past the likes of Spain and these countries that have a, a, a more restricted system than what you're proposing. The most so-called liberal regime for abortion in Europe is in Holland, and yet it's mm. the lowest abortion mm. rate in the world. And that's the key point that people who are against abortion need to take on board. And the reason is it's accompanied by uh, sex education in schools, contraception, etc. And the Dutch do things differently and, from us in a lot of and, ways. And it's in, you know, an excellent system, mm. without question, abortion. I hate the term on demand because it isn't yeah, something to women. Yeah. But what I'm advocating is that a woman should be able to go to her own GP and be prescribed uh, abortion pills or referred for an abortion. Ultimately, it can't be anybody else's decision. Yeah, between her, the you, woman you, and her, her doctor. And, but I do think probably... And, and can I just say, the route. abortion pill is being used by at least yes, three uh, women every single day okay. contacting and them. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, Ruth is coming from, from one position, I'm coming from... Yeah, for and the green, green the triple ear of one of this. Well, I was actually saying that point about that thing, because of your contribution and all, I'll come in with that in a second. Politics is about compromise. I mean, you know, I may say, okay, I fully believe in, in, in female bodily autonomy. Do I believe that's going to pass? That's I don't. Issue. I don't think so. I don't. I would love it to be that way, but I don't. I personally don't think that we will get free liberal abortion in Ireland. And do you think? Sorry, I'm just wondering, Do you think that people will want to know what is replacing it in broad terms before voting in a referendum? I think it's very important to make sure. That the, this idea that if it's removed from the constitution, that you know this floodgate idea, the, the people are very well informed. Yeah, I think this period of the citizens' assembly sort of airs out all of that. But I do think, and it's going back to something you asked earlier. I do think that those of us who are in favour of liberalisation of the abortion laws, to whatever extent, do once the assembly has reported and once we trash it out in committee or whoever's on 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 the committees that perhaps the coalition to repeal the 8th that we come together and we work together and we're reasonable and we deal with this. But that's but, the key yes, and I, I just believe doubt very key. much that's going I to happen. It's it, it is a possible, for, for example, take agree. Louise's position, Ruth's position, your position. Well, Mary, I do believe, I do believe, I can work with you. What is, what is unreasonable about a woman or saying, saying that I'm not talking about my decision. I'm, not, I'm just saying what the issue is political. Yeah, the issue is whether or not it pass. Okay, but you, if you look at social change and social movements, every single one of them, including the women who took the contraception train, mm. were lambasted, you know, in the media. Have to be realistic. Hang on, room. can I finish the point? You, you ask for what's necessary. You don't start by narrowing the thing. And Kate, you stood on a voice for choice, pro-choice yes, platform in the election you got. So you should be arguing that, not limiting it. But she's making oh, a no, point. No, but hang on. During the, repeal, during the repeal bill debate when we put it from the anti-austerity lines before profit, unfortunately you chose to make a contribution that just set out and attacked the anti-austerity alliance. Oh, you, 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 well, you yeah, should, no, but you shouldn't have, like that. because you should have used the, the opportunity. Do you think it's your role to and tell me what I should do? Well, I don't think you should use a repeal bill to We're actually attack we are people about, about coming together and I have commended both Big Wallace and yourself to keep the issue live. Okay, we'll be back with a pre-